Welcome to We Have Issues. I'm Anthony. And I am Stevie Wildcard. And every week, Steve Wildcard and I get together and we do our best to take the various issues and obstacles that life throws our way. And we we kind of make an audio video portrait of them and just like let that age and die as we just neglect our problems completely and get things done. <laughs> right? So we Dorian Gray our problems, Steve. We Dorian Gray. That's what we do here. No, no. So every week we get together and we talk about uh, the various things that distract us and get in the way as we're trying to make comic books and movies and, you know, all sorts of things. Most recently we've been working on a supernatural fantasy action comedy comic called Deathless. Steven, I first of all, I just want to say I love this book and I'm so excited for it. And like, like I like we've gotten some fan art. People have been reading issue two now, and it's like it's 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 like really it's starting to feel like a real series now, you know. Like mm-hmm. in the first game, first one came out, and it was just like, oh, I hope people like this. I don't know. And then the second one came out, and people are like, "Where's the third one?" I'm like, "Yes, this is what I need." It's coming. Um, so Stephen, where's the third one? How are we doing? So I didn't do a lot this week. I have severely underestimated how much energy my kids would still have since they're not going to school for eight and a half hours a day um but i actually reopened page one and was looking at it and realized since i was reusing some things and stuff like that a lot of the lines were blurring so i actually completely tightened up page one and started roughing page two because i drew m two times Mm -hmm. no no spoilers (laughs) and i ended up liking the way her face looked on the smaller picture Uh So I re I just copied the smaller picture and blew it up here and then redrew M here. But then when I blew it up here, I could see the blurry line. So I just basically retraced the. I basically reused something, but I basically just made a really good rough draft. I right. guess and that is basically yeah. what it was. There's nothing wrong with that. And like the whole point of that panel, I mean, it's not a spoiler, uh, but the whole point of that page is like you're zooming in on her. So it's like she would be. It would be mm. the same picture or in the same you know, pose and such. But I did want to make her look like she was tilting more yeah. in the full body and then like the head on look on the bottom. So I did. It is two different pictures yeah. of M. It's just the picture I originally had for her here. I moved down here, blew it up. And I was like, eh, I don't like the way the lines are kind of blurry looking now. So I'm going to redraw that whole picture on top of my old picture. So awesome. No, dude. Um, I'm mean, page one from what I what I saw looks re- looked really good. So I'm excited to see like your updates on it because I'm sure mm-hmm. it's gonna get better. Uh, Just tighter now. For 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 a minute, I was struggling with like the outline of issue four. You know, I was like, I completely finished writing issue three. I was like, we're you know, I I, I want it to be good. I think is- issue three is fun, but like issue four, I was struggling with it because I was like, it needs to set up the finale of the book you know like issue five we've said we're doing five issues you know like this this is the kind of book where it's like we could have stretched it into freaking 60 issues and like gotten this huge epic story we're trying to fit an epic story into five issues Mm. um and and i'll tell you steve one of my weaknesses as a comic book writer is like i tend to um get stuck in time you know, uh, like I tend to get stuck in like the time as if it's a movie, like, you know, like I watch, uh, you know, like like as if you're when you're flipping through the book, it all kind of happens in real time. Like, I, you, you know, there are no huge weird time jumps and like I don't jump locations a lot unless we're, we're going to be in that location with the main character. It's basically following one perspective uh, most of the time, whereas a lot of comic books, you can go from panel to panel and it's just like I'm in France in 1876 and I'm in, you know, London mm. and then, like, you know, the year 3472, you know, or whatever. So it's like you jump around a lot and like you see all these different characters like with with our book. It's kind of like the pacing. I, I like the pacing, but it also kind of feels like it, it reads the way a movie would be watched, I feel, you know, so mm-hmm. I was like, um, so we don't get a lot of story in every issue, but we get like a good a good story in every issue, you know, um, so issue four kind of needs a lot of story in that one small space and i was like oh crap it has to have a lot of action and you have to set up for like this big finale and i'm like well how am i going to do this and like i want to make sure i focus on the right characters and do the right things and i was so I, I was struggling but i got it steven i freaking nailed it i did it and i started like writing issue four so now we are super ahead i'm like like, like super ahead with the writing deathless is just like set in stone for a good portion of time yeah, dude, uh, because normally what, what I do is basically like just twiddle my thumbs and wait for like pages. So then I'd like flat color and stuff. Uh, but now it's like we're like super ahead, which is really cool. Um, and it makes me feel like, OK, I'm I've 
I also can use my time to write this movie because we're going to make a movie mm. this year. Uh, so, you know, I started writing, you know, the updating stakeout and such. And that kind of reminded me, since it's a new year, I wanted to talk about what our resolutions are as a, as friends and as a podcast and as like, you know, creators of this stuff. Uh, so what are our, Stephen? Stephen, every year, every year we've gotten together <laughs> and we have done... <laughs> And it's always it's always the same. It's always on the same day. It's like, you know, we, we don't do it in the first day. We rest. And then we're like, you know, we're going to get our resolutions out there. Uh, so will you hit us with that sweet, sweet New Year's resolution song? It's that time of the year where you're going to lie to yourself. You're going to make a bunch of promises that your future self just can't keep for you. But it's that time anyway. It's the New Year's resolutions on We Have Issues podcast. <laughs> Every time, Stephen <laughs> knocks it out of the park. Just like can't get enough of that song uh so steven every year we talk about what we're going to get done this year as a whole so like what do you what are you looking forward to this year like from us from us i'm excited to make a movie that's going to be really fun okay. uh nervous but excited i know it's going to be fine um i'm excited to have issue three completed because i know it will be done by the end of the year just okay. hopefully a lot sooner <laughs> that's what i was gonna ask okay okay let's let's be Let's try to be realistic about this for a second, right? Can we get two issues done this year? I think I think it's possible. But <laughs> it, I think what one part we really underestimate is the shipping process. We just need to get better about ordering this stuff ahead of time. And then I think I think we could. Yeah. If not, I think both issues would be complete and maybe we would still be f f fulfilling the, the second Kickstarter okay. going into next year. You know what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. Oh, man, I'm I'm because I'm really hoping I'm trying to figure out. Right. I like I, I my my problem, like w like previously on Anthony and Stephen's life, you know, like when we would make when we try to make comics together, I get all I get like all wrapped up and like like the kind of like anxious about getting things done where I'm like, I just want, I want to make the comics. Why aren't we making them faster? Why aren't I making them fast <laughs> enough? You know, but it's a whole pro it's a process. We need to, you know, do it as it is going to be done. You know, we're going, it's, it, it's going to take, take time and it's good. Cause we're, you know, right now I, we're ahead and I can work on the other project, you know, I can mm. work on the, the movie project, which, which does need my attention in order to get it finished. Um, but I'm trying to figure out Steven, how because like one of our resolutions is to finish that movie and i'd like to do two issues if possible if not i'm not gonna you know go crazy I'm not gonna, you know but like um i'm trying to figure out like the dates like when when do you think, when, I don't do you know think I, when do you want to shoot the movie well well we need to get the money first you know that's yeah. the you know so the this is my plan okay this is my resolution i'll tell you so as far as new year's resolutions for the movie i would like to shoot a short like test thing with you and I as like a kind of trailer little um what do you call it kind of like a like a little ad for the movie just like a little teaser to get people interested in the movie uh so then we can share that on the kickstarter and do all of that and I want to build the kickstarter uh and uh, you know launch and hold hopefully be successful the kickstarter uh and once that's funded you know we would spend the, the you know whatever time it takes to you know film the movie um i just don't know when to do it so what this my plan my plan at the very least is to use the first like couple of months few months you know like probably by march i'm gonna completely solidify the the script you know like i'm gonna fix it because i've been I'm making it into a feature film script. And like, so it's, it's been working. I actually really like these, like these things that I've added to it. I think it's, it's made it a lot of fun. And it's also uh, fun because people who watch the table read that we did, they're going to have some like extra stuff to enjoy mm -hmm. in the movie, you know? Um, but yeah, dude, I, it, it's, it's, it's going to be fun. I'm just not, I'm trying to get the, the timetable right because you know, you and I talked about uh, not launching a Kickstarter for issue three until it's like near finished. Right. So, so that's why I was just thinking too. So I think you need, we need to do either we need because March fourth I think is still a good day to launch a Kickstarter. Yeah, it's, it's it should be tradition no matter what. I agree. Um, I guess we just see how much we have done of three because here's what I'm thinking. Let's hear. Whatever Kickstarter we do first, whether it's the movie or the comic, we probably shouldn't launch the next Kickstarter for one of those projects until the other one's fulfilled. Oh, I see what you're saying. I don't. Okay, I'm gonna say I don't agree 
Um, only because I've so it takes a long time to make it make a movie and also uh-huh. to get like the um like the the, the Blu-rays and all that stuff made if that's the path that we're going. That stuff does take an extended period of time. And like okay. dude, every movie I've ever backed on Kickstarter has taken a year to get the rewards back. Like Okay. Like I just I would just feel I guess like if we had I guess it probably wouldn't wouldn't matter. I just feel no, like if I, we like if we launch the comic and then like in March, let's say we let's yeah. say we launch issue three in March and then in May we launch the movie. Right. But the March, we still haven't, you know, the comic isn't still produced I yet. See, no, I see. I see. But, I mean, but we also have a hundred percent track record. So That's anyone right. that has supported us has always gotten everything. So yeah, not to mention, okay, so this is what I'm thinking. Okay. Uh what if what if we launch the movie in March? Because that takes longer. And what we'll do is we'll launch the Kickstarter for the uh comic for issue three when we're finished with the issue. So then that way we're literally just kickstarting for the funds to print it. Exactly, which is really what we end up doing anyway. You know, like that's what we're you know we can uh, print the the initial run and hopefully uh, print uh, you know the 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 backup issues for the you know the or the catch up issues rather from the you know people who are interested. But like I feel like okay, so if we launch the Kickstarter for the movie, that can be like that's a process, and we'll say and we'll be completely you know like just as transparent as possible and we'll be like, look, we're going to make a movie. This is obviously our first attempt at doing this. It it could take up to a year. We're but we're definitely going to fulfill this no matter what, you know, it's going to happen. Um, And then while we're doing that, we're just, we'll keep posting updates. Well, obviously we have the podcast. And then when we're done with uh, the comic book, if that happens before the movie is, you know, finished, then we can just be like, Hey, here's a Kickstarter for this thing that we've completed and we'll make a cool trailer for it. And we'll say like, mm-hmm. here this is. And like, I, they're two completely different, uh, you know, entities, completely yeah. different entities, the different projects. So I think people understand. And like, I don't want to hold the comic back because the movie has like, you know, is, is in um, production, you know, cause like the truth of, of the movie is, we're going to get it. We're going to get it done and we're going to get it as right as we possibly can. It, But it is going to be a trial and error process with some of it. You know, like mm-hmm. some of it, I know it's going to be like, it's going to be a little sloppy at first. I'm going to figure it out. I have, a, I have to learn a lot of things. Um, but it's something that we can, it's I, like, I definitely believe that we can do it. And I, I, I know it's possible. It's just oh, scary. It's scarier than the comic, you know, like the comic is like, sure. We, we've done, been doing it for a long time. We know, you know, and like uh, the, the movie is more like one of those like hypothetical things like in your head. And it's like, oh, yeah, I've been thinking about making a movie for a long time. That doesn't mean that I can, you know, but it's like I, I feel like I can. So I'm going to try. Um, but yeah, so I don't like as far as the, as far as the New Year's, sorry to, to, to make this shorter. As far as the New Year's is concerned, I, I like I'd like to do the movie, just launch the Kickstarter so then we can start it, like start the process. And then because we're going to keep doing the comic book process anyway. And I know the movie yeah, is sure. a longer process, you know, so I think that would make sense. And it would also instill more confidence knowing that, like, as soon as the comic book is done, we're going to, you know, be able, be able to hand it off. Because really, um, the movie, we need the funds to produce the, the work. With the style. comic, we just put all of our time in. Exactly. Know? Yeah. And, that, and that's the case. And like, but the only way we can print the comics is mm-hmm. through the Kickstarter. Thing. But yeah, dude, so I think that'll work. So I would like, if possible, I'd like to publish two comic books and one movie this year. If if we get one comic book and one movie, that will still be a huge, uh, you know. We lie to ourselves on January <laughs> 2nd. <laughs> so... I would also like Stephen to do at least two conventions, right? Mm-hmm. And to do at least two music videos this year. Okay, cool. We have we have the back catalog for yeah. the music videos for sure. Yeah, we have them, and I like I because like there's a part of me that's like, oh, we should do one every other month or something like that. But I'm like, I feel like that's a little bit too much with the movie and the comics and trying to work and just having life and knowing 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 Stephen that issues are going to arise because they always do. <laughs> there's always so many issues. There are always so many issues. One of those issues is not going to be dating for me, Stephen. I'm I'm out of the game. <laughs> cool, good, quit. I'm not I'm not interested anymore. Never. I love this back and forth with it. It's it's the best. <laughs> you never know what Anthony you're gonna get. I Life is it. like no. a box of Anthony's. Well, <laughs> well like the, okay, I'll tell you. Like, I mean, you you know me. Like, well, because mm. just, because in reality, if if anyone's actually paying attention, the the reality of the situation is, of course, I would like to have someone in my life and like, you know, like spend time with someone and have, you know, but there are a lot of benefits 
to just not doing that thing. <laughs> like a There's lot. a lot of benefits to the Fortress of Solitude. That's very true. It's very true. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, but okay, Stephen. Stephen, are there any other resolutions that like like that you you want to talk about? I want to like kick sugar out of my life altogether. Yeah, because yeah, I don't need it. I really don't like it. I really don't. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'll eat a cookie, but like. I don't think I need sugar, namely like any sort of soda. Like holidays is always crazy because I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. And then just I get like bombarded with the best confections and like like cookies and treats oh. known to man and just yeah. bountiful amounts of carbonated beverages with liquor and sugar. And yeah, for yeah. me, it's the uh, the coffee creamers and then beers mm. like i get that's like, one that's one perk for me is like i like my coffee black with a splash of cream that's literally yeah, all i take nice. it so like I'm, I'm glad i'm not like at least like like my coffee is like six yeah. pumps of sugar or something like that it's not but i do like a coke in the afternoon and i gotta right. stop <laughs> yeah i have a, i have a couple of those too and it's like <laughs> for me it's been like i need to start moving my body and drinking more water you know and like i i because i have been like basically subsisting on coffee and and it's like, crazy how your body yeah. just you feel like worse more often that's like what getting older is is like the things you could get away with you can no longer get away with but you're so stubborn yeah. that you're gonna keep trying and oh, like yeah. your, your yeah, body's right. gonna keep checking you like even i'm almost i'm almost 38 People still won't let me call myself old and it's unacceptable. I'm just going to say it is unacceptable. Like I, when I was a child, everyone who was older than 25 was old. And that's just, if you, if you're a kid, if you, if you are young, everyone older than 25 is old. That's just the truth. And then once you get there, once you, you're like, Oh no, like everyone knows you don't want to turn 30. Oh no. People don't want to, th- Oh, I want to pretend I'm, I'm, I'm 29 for the third time or whatever they say, all those, all that nonsense because it's old because 30 is old and we're allowed to call ourselves old mm-hmm. because Steven, Steven, everyone wants to imagine that we lived 150. It's just like a, a guaranteed thing. It's not Steven, Steven. We've had so, we, we know so many people who have died before getting <laughs> to the age of 40. Like, Steven. Well, like he, the human condition is is sea turtles booking it to the ocean is what it is yeah so yeah we're doing our best to like frogger our way through this like insane you know calamitous reality uh but the truth is we're not all gonna make it none of us are gonna make it and we're not all gonna make it for very long so if i want to call myself old shut up older person <laughs> I, like it's okay it's okay and there's nothing wrong with being old we need to stop oh you're old. still a baby yeah, oh god it's like this weird, i am not still a baby man not even a little bit like i, I you know you're, okay it's just it's so absurd to like gatekeep aging <laughs> like, it's it's so so and like it's there's always like this weird superiority complex of it where it's like no you'll see when you're older i'm like no i'll hurt a little more when i'm older and like things will be harder as i get older it doesn't mean i'm not old that's how life works what are you talking about yeah. like you're not just young until eventually you're dead and then you can call yourself old that's crazy let me call myself old i have more wrinkles i my knees hurt i can't sit certain ways like my hair's thinning like shut up okay <laughs> it's absurd like, it's, like we can't gatekeep aging it's so stupid and like all that is is like people want to feel uh young you know, like, oh no, I'm I'm 48, not I'm young as the day is long. I'm like, no, you're not. Like, you can feel great. I'm glad you do, and you should. But like, what are we doing? Like, why are we? You know, we we can't like hero worship youth to the extent that we deny our own like reality. That's crazy. I'm old. It's fine. I like being old. I want to get older. I have one like gray hair. I want more. I have one. It looks here. like you have it in the Reed Richards section too. Oh then. man, That's I got. Nice. I have a couple here. I'm hoping. I'm like praying every day to the elder gods. I like that. I like elder gods. <laughs> <laughs> I'm praying to the elder gods. That I just that I just go gray here. Like watch Steven. I'm gonna have gray hair and nothing. It's, it's like <laughs> I'm gonna have to, to read as Cassandra. it's turning gray, all of your black hair just starts falling out. <laughs> just <laughs> okay. So yeah. But yeah, Steven, it's almost my birthday. I'm excited for that. I, I do I like I want to take care of myself this year too. So like we're gonna I don't know. Like I'm, I'll yell at you about sugar, and you can yell at me about exercising because I want to. I want to get. I'm gonna get in better movie shape. You know, I want to get. I'm gonna get like. like- See, that's what's BS, man. Is I lift heavy rocks all day, but because of my metabolism and like sugar, it's just. 
Yeah. This is where I stay. <laughs> My body's like, this is a good weight. This is a good place to be. You can still push a wheelbarrow and lift heavy rocks. It's fair. It's fair though, body. Like, and you look <laughs> good. Everyone knows you look good. But Steven, people, people, people who watch our show are always complimenting you. They're always saying like how amazing you are and how great your hair is and how beautiful you are and how you look incredible. They say so many things. They ask questions about you all the time and ask questions about me. Not as often, uh, but it happens. Um, and so, Stephen, let's do it. Let's let's do a quick uh, questions from the colony. It's that time of the show where everybody's got the best questions for the wild con. And then they also lob questions at Anthony that aren't fair or fun. But Steven gets all the fun ones. Just like Steven gets all the good stuff. Just like Steven gets everything. I'm just kidding. It's the questions from the colony. <laughs> I was, I was, I was pulling in your energy for thank that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony gets nothing. Okay, <laughs> let's go. So, so everyone, everyone's wrong. We'll, we'll, you know, pose to the to the peoples of Twitter's or you know wherever, and then we'll say like, hey, you have any questions for us? People, people do, people do. Um, and if you do, go follow us on Twitter, and you can ask us some some questions. <clears throat> this week we have we have a bunch, and some of them are fun. Lee, one of our best friends, uh, asks, would you rather receive ten thousand dollars, but it has to be spent only in person in pennies? Or five thousand dollars in a in the form of an outfit made of one dollar bills that you must wear until spending the last strategically placed dollar bill. That one seems like an easy one for me, but go on. What do you think? Oh, I'm rolling those pennies. One hundred percent. Each one's gonna be rolled to a dollar, and I'm just gonna. I mean, yeah. I the way I see it is use the penny money. Yeah, for like things that are under ten bucks, and then no, just dude, throw rules at people. This is what I would do. I'm telling you, okay, I I, I agree with you for the pennies for a hundred percent. I agree with you. Uh, but what I would do is I would just spend the week it would take to buy the biggest thing I could buy with those pennies. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 I would just buy something absurd that I could sell for those pennies. Like I would be like, okay, I'm gonna buy this like giant yacht or whatever it is, and then I'm gonna buy it, and I would sell it. For significantly less than whatever it is. I mean, obviously, I couldn't know ten thousand dollars. I don't know whatever I can get, but like I would buy things for the money and then sell those things probably. Um, also, ten thousand dollars. I mean, it's a lot of money. Um, like like that is life changing money. If you have ten thousand dollars to send me, uh, it's, it's the the money sign. Uh, we have issues on Cash App. Please send me <laughs> send me ten thousand dollars, and we'll see what I do. It's amazing. It'll be so incredible to watch me. The spend. gang becomes a Gambian. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like, I agree though. Like, like, even if I had to spend them, like, even if I had to count out a hundred every time, I would much rather have to do that than wear a suit until I spend $10,000 because I don't strategically too. First, first dollars coming right off. Oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, I'm just a bunch of singles in a dong. A bunch of singles (laughs) in a dong. Why did he spend that one first? Oh, the, that was the, supposed to be the last one. The title of my autobiography and sex tape. <laughs> but, but Dollar just... number two is bunghole. Oh, <laughs> well, number two, Stephen. Also, oh yeah, you can't take it off. Does that mean? I mean, it would have to be because, like, just in case, you have to spend. Yeah, spend, I mean, like that underwear money, <laughs> like real. Fast. Sorry for these poop dollars, sir. <laughs> they were in the way at the time. See, I, I, you, this, you this, this whole wish, underwear, to... Steven, you would use those to buy underwear, right? Like you have to, what else would you do? But if like, you get that though, and you're like, you had just eaten Taco Bell, like, okay, and a genie appears, he's like, here's your dollar suit. And you're like, yeah, oh no, oh, I need to spend this now. Wow. If I spend it here, I'm just going to be stuck for another 10 minutes. More Taco Bell. Give me $10,000 <laughs> in tacos, please. Taco money well spent. This sir pooped out of his, out of his pores. Everything is covered in food. So I wasn't supposed to eat Taco Bell twice in the same day. You're not supposed to. It's actually illegal in most places. Uh, so <laughs> Fowler asks Fowler. Uh, by the way, oh, Fowler, I, I just had the most baby freaking. Oh yes, congratulations, happy, Fowler! Happy birthday! Oh my gosh. Um. So Fowler asks, which is your favorite Queen Cambria album? It's so tough, dude. I feel oh. like I feel like I know what yours is. What is it, Stephen? And I feel like it's a safe one and it's a good one to say, but I think yours is no world for tomorrow. Yeah, that's that's it for sure. That's, that's probably it. And I can agree with that. Like, that's yeah. definitely like up there for me. For me, yeah. it's so tough because like every I, I would say there's parts of every album that I 
like but don't love Mm -hmm. but then there's parts of albums that like i really like for example good apollo volume one i really love all of the willing wells and it would be really hard to not say that's not my favorite album just because of those four tracks Mm -hmm. but i think i'm gonna cheat because i get the most bang for my buck and it is technically a double album i'm gonna say the afterman ascension and descension because it's like the best story told by them in like a, a beginning and an end situation and it's it's awesome. That album is awesome from start to finish. So I'm going to say The Afterman for awesome. sure. Okay, so <clears throat> Levi asked, for Anthony, what are all of your ta- or what are all of your tattoos and why did you get each of them? I only have two and a half tattoos. Um I have two and a half tattoos. I have um, a Madman tattoo, and I have an Ash from the Evil Dead tattoo. Uh, why did I get them? Well, Madman, it's uh, Madman in the Hamlet pose because I love both Madman and Hamlet. And also Madman happens to be the comic book that made me realize that people can write comic books. You know, like I, I read Madman and I was just like, uh, this guy's telling this interesting, quirky, silly story that's also somehow really personal and full of these like ex- existential thoughts and like, you know, philosophical stuff. And it, it was really interesting to me how we would juggle those, you know, the silly and the sincere. And I loved it. And so, yeah, it meant a lot to me. And uh, Evil Dead, I just love Bruce Campbell. No, and I'll, mostly it's uh, that was the movie that made me realize that people made movies. Honestly, like <laughs> uh, Evil Dead, when I watched Evil Dead 2, I was like, if, like for the first time i was like who made this like what is this you know and i was i was young i was like what what is this thing like how do you make this like this is crazy and i loved it uh but yeah so it was like the basically uh mike Allred was the, the my you know uh doorway into realizing that people can make comic books and you know sam raimi is the doorway into realizing people can make movies and those are two things that i want to do as made evident by you know the million episodes of the show that we're doing um but yeah, that's that's what it is. And my uh, half tattoo is because I'm a, I have problems. I have issues. And I was like, I'm going to go get a tattoo. And I wanted to get a tattoo, but I wasn't sure. And I know this sounds stupid. I understand this sounds stupid. But I was like, what if I get a tattoo and I freak out because I have a permanent thing on my skin that I can't get rid of? You know, like, what if I don't like it and I want to wash it off? Or what if it just makes me feel uncomfortable? Because sometimes things just make me feel uncomfortable. And I can't really explain that in a way that makes sense. Sometimes I just feel like bound by things and I just need to like, I shiver. and It's terrible. Um, and I was afraid that that would happen if I had any ink on my skin. Um, but I really wanted them because I love the I love these things and I and I really like tattoos. I think they look cool, but I was like, ah, what if this happens to my brain? <laughs> um, you know, so I was like, I have to know the parking situation of the tattoo. Uh, so <laughs> I so I went to Michael's and I bought a pen, like uh, one of those fountain pens, and I bought uh, some ink and I like I did st- I, I I poked into my skin and I made this like smiley face <laughs> on my leg <laughs> that no one knows is there. And it's a little like it's it's just a few dots. And I was like, I lived with it for a few days. And I was like, OK, if I can live with this stupid dotty smiley face on my leg for a few days, I can live with like a really nice looking, you know, other thing on my arm. So I did that. Um, and so those are my two and a half tattoos. Steven, it says. So Levi also asked uh, for Steven. What's the happiest thing that's ever happened to you, Steven? Oof. Marrying my wife and. Watching my kids born are obviously uh top second to meeting me. What? (laughs) But then I would have to say, and my wife even points it out. Tina points it out. She goes, he didn't even smile like that in any of her wedding photos. But like when I met Coheed and Cambria with Tina, it's the most organic full tooth smile I think I've ever done in my entire life. Like, because I don't smile with my teeth really for pictures and it's just a pure, like, just full energy. So, yeah, meeting Coheed was a, oh, was that's a top-tier am- moment for sure. That's amazing, dude. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> it's such a genuine <laughs> smile. It is. It's so genuine. So it much is. peace. <laughs> just full of love, unlike all of his wedding pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I just look like Al Bundy. No. It's so amazing. I was very happy at the There's of actually course. a lot of good pictures of me from of me of from my wedding. Tina just likes to be Tina. And, oh yeah, you know, no, she's the best. Um, so <laughs> okay, Levi's last question. They ask, uh, for both, which do you like more, pooping or peeing? Oof. 
Okay. Both have their strengths and both have their weaknesses. I'm going <laughs> to no, say. Okay, Steven, I'm going to say, and I know I don't, this is my, maybe it's a controversial opinion. I don't know. I haven't put a lot of thought into it, but I, I put so much thought into this that I'm going to say that my definite answer is peeing. And I'll tell you why. Uh, peeing is almost always for me, just like a general relief when it happened. Like, ah, oh, this is just mm-hmm. nice. Whereas pooping is often a frustrating emergency of a situation. <laughs> like I, like I, I, I can almost always, if I have to just pee, there's never an emergency that's terrible. You know what I mean? Like if I just, if I have to pee, it's always like a, it's a, oh, okay, I can always go behind a building and just like oh, pee. I can just, it's not, you know, I can, I can go to the side of a school and just pee and no one's going to ask me what I left there. You know what I mean? Like it's just going to happen, <laughs> you know? But there are going to be stories told about the legendary. You know, okay. I'll tell you, like there was one time I was coming home from your house, right? And I was there. We, of course, you know, we were we were hanging out. I actually have a pretty good pee story too. You? Okay, I mean, this isn't a great story, but it's a story. Um, so it's like I was coming home from your house, and I, you know, we live about half an hour away from each other. So I'm like, I'm driving, and like, I, it was the situation where, like, as soon as I got in the car, I was like, I have to pee, and I was like, I probably should have just gone when I was in there. I could go back, but I was like, we already said <laughs> bye. I already hugged everyone. I said, hey, I came back to pee. I got to really pee. I like got to pee. I, like I should have. I should have done it, Stephen. Like we're close enough friends where I could have just been like, sorry, dude, got to pee real quick. And just like, it would have been fine. Not what I did. It's not what I did. What I did instead is I got in my car and I just hated myself the whole time. I was just like driving, just like, I should have just gone. I should have gone. And then, you know what you start doing? Like you start thinking like, I can just pull over right here. Uh, what if someone lives there? Someone lives there. So, like, what if a cop pulls up? What if like, so I'm looking for buildings. And I was like, it's fine. I'll make it home. I'll make it home. So I get, I get like halfway home and I'm like, I'm not going to make it home. So I was like, I have to stop somewhere, but it's like two in the morning. Like there, no one's up, no one's awake, you know, like nothing's open. So I'm like, it's two in the morning, nothing's open. What do I do? So I was like, oh, gas stations, of course, duh. You know, like when I, so I look, I look and I see a 7-Eleven. I'm like, yes, 7 lifts open all the time, you know, and I, all the lights are on. It's the brightest, brightest day. And I, I, st- I stop in there and I like, I pull in. And I, 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 I like run to the door and I pull and the door is locked as hell. Just like completely locked, just gatekeep, like just like none shall pass. I was like, you shall not enter this day, like pee your pants. And I was like, I don't want to, Um, you know, so I was like, I'm going to pee right in this doorway. Like, like what is going to happen? So I'm looking around and like I went to the side of the building and it's also brightly lit. <laughs> Every, there's a there's a, a choir singing everyone look at it so, so i like pee in front of this choir i just like stand next to a tree and i'm just i just peed and i was like it's two o'clock in the morning and i'm peeing in public uh in a bright light there's just so many lights <laughs> i was like and i did the like i did like the like little thing i like pulled my pants down and i was just like i'm all the way like butt out basically just like <laughs> i was like why not what do i, I don't want to pee on my, like anyway so um but i did and it was fine and you know what Nothing, nothing got on me. I didn't make any messes. I didn't have to tell everyone that story. It wasn't a huge deal. <laughs> I went about my business and I felt better. Uh, but, but if it were the other way, Stephen, if it were if it were pooping, it, I wouldn't have been as relieved. I would. It would have happened. I would have been. Well, if, you, if it was pooping, you probably would have just had to shit your pants and then would have, go home and. Clean. I would have just accepted those. Those. Yeah, that's I, those consequences were mine, and it would yep. have been. It would have been fine. Uh, Stephen, what's your pee story before we move so, on? So, so I. Same similar situation. We were we were all hanging out, all out somewhere, and then I drove home, mm-hmm. and I had to pee so bad. But I was like doing that thing where I'm like, I'm almost home, almost home. So I'm like, like literally, like you know, rubbing your hands down your thighs. And then I'm, I run in, like I get home, I run to the front door, and I'm fumbling my fucking keys because like I literally have to pee so bad that I can't even think. And okay. I'm fumbling I, and I'm fumbling. I and then I like finally get the key in the hole. I turn the lock and I go to open the door. And my mom had put the chain lock on. And literally, as as my door got stopped by the chain lock, my I just pissed my pants. It's like my my body's like, oh, you tried, but we we lost. So I'm just gonna pee right now. And like I literally just just peed my pants. Like like in like while holding the doorknob, looking at the chain, accepting my fate. I just pissed my pants right there in the entryway. I'm just like. And it was it was it was pretty funny. That's even it's amazing. It's amazing. Like it was, I, like, it was amazing how my body just let like no immediately we, like didn't try to hold it anymore. No, it's like nope. no, because you know at that moment you're like it's happened. Nope. It, like it's, the time is coming. Nothing else I can do. It's 
I so, pushed it to its limit. And the only thing I can do is break the sink at this point. Like someone has to be like, I'm sorry, the sink was broken. It got all over me. Like you were like that when you came in. No, you ain't cool unless you pee your pants. <laughs> okay. So we answered Levi's questions. Catman Jones asked, why can't Marvel get their shit together and make a Dr. Doom movie? What do you think, Steven? I feel like most of the Fantastic Four right now is still in that weird, like people, like I think they're just afraid that Fantastic Four doesn't work, yeah. even though they obviously will with just mm-hmm. the proper storytelling and the proper yeah. actors. I'll tell you, I 100% don't want a Doctor Doom movie because I think uh, there's, there's, I'm not going to say there's no good way to do it. You can make an interesting movie. You can make it like a Hannibal-esque, you know, situation where it's like you're following the villain and you're going through the stuff. But like, you know what they do? They try to make him relatable and too redeemable. And like, it's not that he has to be this 100% evil character, but I don't, I don't want to agree with him at all. And I don't want to see, we already see freaking one of the most uh, obvious evil characters in the world, like from the boys, we already see a uh, Homelander being like hero worshipped by people of a particular uh, political affiliation sometimes. And I'm like, this guy's clearly the villain here. And here you are identifying and relating with him. And like, I feel like if there were a Dr. Doom movie, there would be people like, he has a point there. Like, like Thanos should have snapped. And it's like, and I just like, I don't want to deal with it. I want him to be the bad guy. And I want the Fantastic Four to be the good guys. And I just want, like, I just want to watch that movie. Uh, I wanted to see them in all of their like silly, interesting sci-fi glory and like, let him be the villain. You know, like I... Mm. I like I I I I'm sure it could be good. You could. Well, make- and if you think about it too, they already kind of gave that whole pseudo like philosophical like like Thanos kind of has had some like Doctor Doom vibes to him already. Well, so you know did, what I'm saying? Like so did Loki when they first introduced. And so did Loki. Like, he so was like, like, I am burdened with glorious purpose. And it's like, yeah, what else is Doctor Doom but that? You know? And it's just like, I. I I don't know. I like. I, I do love Doom. Doom yeah, is too. one of the greatest Marvel villains of all time. But I think I think it's just a waiting period. I think it's just letting stuff kind of run its course, and then you can kind of bring Doom in. Yeah, you definitely I, need the. You don't have the pieces on the chessboard for Doom yet. Exactly, so exactly, you you don't. And like I, do, I don't want them to introduce the Fantastic Four as just like the 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 folly of him. Like I don't want like Dr. Doom to be in the forefront of a movie and that's how they introduce the Fantastic Four. It's like, oh, the person who stops them. The the antagonist hero, you know, like he's the protagonist in the story and the heroes or the good guys are the antagonistic force in the story of the the, the relatable villain. I don't don't, mm-hmm. I don't, don't really want that. Uh, I think it could happen. You could make it good. I'll write it if you want me to. You know, <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you're you paying me, I'll quit my job and write that movie and it will be good. It's just not the freaking movie I want personally. You know, like that's not really mm-hmm. the... But uh, they, I think the, the, the reason they can't do it is because they haven't found a way to make that the most profitable uh, choice. <laughs> that's, yep. that's unfortunately the reality is that's why Marvel hasn't done it because they don't see it. Uh, they, when they fed their like AI, uh, like con- I'm sure it's like a self-aware algorithm at this point where it's just like, this is the movie you need to make in order to make this amount of money. And, and, and like, it doesn't even mean it's going to be profitable. It means that it's going to be the most profitable for them, th- th- whether or not it succeeds financially in the box office. <laughs> so they're like, you'll make the most money off of this particular idea. If it fails in such a way that you can get these tax credits while also doing this for this company. It's all so absurd and like ridiculous. It's all just money. It's money. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's just silly. Um, So yeah, the the reality is when, so they'll make a Dr. Doom movie when their like conscious AI bot tells them that it's most profitable one way or another. Uh, Will we ever see it? Who knows? You see what's happening at WB. They make movies Mm -hmm. supposedly that never exist. Anyway, speaking of that, Steven, and all that nonsense I just said, um, Dinosaurus, whom I love and will always love, by the way, uh, asked, What's your favorite conspiracy theory? Steven, what's your favorite conspiracy theory? That Kane is Bigfoot. <clears throat> I like that. I don't, I don't see why he wouldn't be. I mean, he has... Uh, yeah, I mean, he's going to walk the earth forever, right? Cursed. He's going to walk the earth cursed forever. He's, not he's to mention, Bigfoot like, now. what is his mark? You know, like, what was the mark of Kane? You are hairy, <laughs> your feet are big, and you stink. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> These are horrible yeah. things. These are you. horrible things. And... He found a wife somehow. He was like, yo, you, you into feet? She's like, duh. You know, like, duh. 
Yeah. And big feet. Um, you know what they say about guys with big feet? They're <laughs> hairy and love the Henderson. Tell me he just murdered your brother and I'll marry you right now. Well, do I have good news for you? <laughs> no, but, uh, two kinks. <laughs> One, like, <laughs> that's I, I I love oh man. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's a good one though, Steven. I, I like that one. I like that uh yeah, Kane. I like you could you can make an argument for just Kane being the the origin of like every cryptid. Like every, Kane, he really could be a Loch Ness monster. Like, <laughs> you don't want to know how. You, don't wanna, <laughs> you know what they say about guys with big feet? They you know the Loch Ness. <laughs> Have you oh this that's another... the true mark of Kane. Maybe that's that's my favorite conspiracy theory is that the Loch Ness monster was just whale dongs the whole time. I the just... reason why no one could talk to Kane after he was given the mark is because he would tell everyone that the mark is a giant penis, and then everyone would have killed their brothers. <laughs> 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 i love brother look, come here go ah! like, it's historically <laughs> accurate if you look at look it up don't google it don't google that okay. there was a time when everyone was just killing their brothers for dongs that's <laughs> <laughs> so they were packing meat in the past that's for damn but anyways <laughs> <laughs> no, my favorite i don't know if i have a favorite like i i actually i like that conspiracy theory that i said on the the show where i said um i feel like we're just gold farmers for some uh some being that exists like within a time frame that we can't conceive of you know like like you know we're basically the ants to a grasshopper like an alien grasshopper that we don't know about because it exists it's just waiting for us to farm gold as we're you know it like flies around the universe and it'll come back and pick it up over time i like that one i also i like all the ones with like aliens um like the anunnaki and that's and like lizard people those are also interesting like the idea of uh like us like cultivating a specific uh temperature on the earth uh for us like lizard beings and like to 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 survive better like it's, it's all so strange and interesting um the one that i believe in is that i've died several times and i keep coming back uh in different realities every time and that's just it's just true it's steven just... It's just accurate is what I like. I don't I'm trying to remember uh, the last time I died. I don't like it was. But but I think I've died like four times while we were the bucket verse was probably your last death. Right. I think I think so. I don't I'm trying to remember like if I. Yeah, because the bucket. Yeah, the fire happened. Uh, I almost got hit by a car. I mean, very narrowly like crazy. That was so crazy. And then the bucket verse happened. I think that was the last one. I haven't like choked or anything. I, I yeah, I think it was the bucket burst probably last one. Last time we jumped realities, but it definitely happened. Um, so Atlas J Lively Atlas on Twitter asked, uh, how many comics would you like to produce this year? Steven, we already answered that. Like we're going for two. two. We're going for, we're going two, for two. We're hoping. Um, W Town Andrews asks, why only one episode of the amazing, amazing screw on head? Do you know the amazing screw on head? Mm-mm. no it was like oh so it's this show it was uh like designed by and like conceived by mike mignola the of hellboy mm-hmm. fame and uh it was it was i think it was paul giamatti i could be wrong i've only seen it like once it was years ago i had it i burned it i remember it was it was so long ago that like i downloaded it on like what was it like limewire or something it was one of the it wasn't limewire it was one after that um but it, you could download uh it was like views or something but you could download movies and that did, allegedly i don't know shut up shut, come at me mike mignola i downloaded amazing screw on it so i could watch it and oh I, you're I burned so it. finished <laughs> if you see and i so I watched it once. I think it was Paul Giamatti. And it was it was like this cool like robot guy who had like a screw on head and he would like jump onto like different bodies and he would he could like control, you know, the body. And um it was it was really cool. Why only one episode? Money. It's always the answer is money. They were like, oh, you know, that, can we make a lot of money on this? No. And like, okay, cool. We're never gonna try again. That's just it sucks. It's sad. Uh so capitalism, because we haven't figured out how to <laughs> stop going to war and use some of that money to feed you know society and then we move forward with expression because we have more to express because we have less concern about those stuff we have different concerns about living life and how to express you know the living life um so what do i know I'm just a guy who's gonna die one day um jd asked what does the fox say steven well it says quite a few things mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. it it says a rick dick 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 do 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 what the fox say? Okay. <laughs> Before we get sued by a fox and everyone else who's going to sue me, Mike Mignola, I'm coming. Fox News is after you now, too. Fox we weren't even fox talking about Operation is after us. So, Red Heron asked, What's the average expenditure these days for the first issue of a comic? 
Oof. so are they asking um like how much it costs to produce the comic or are they asking so we have the fortunate ability to produce everything on our end yeah for i guess if you wanted to count costs my biggest cost was get, uh investing in an ipad pro yeah which was 12 or 1500 dollars, mm-hmm. and then anthony and i mean obviously you have to have computers and stuff to be able to communicate with each other back and forth yeah. but those prices vary um really for us it's just print and shipping costs which believe it or not is quite expensive i mean yeah. i think on our end it costs uh, i don't even know how marvel and them produce comics and make money because just to print comics is like the roughly no, whatever it, price is. i mean they they probably make an absurd amount just via ad. adverts adverts ads. but yeah well, so I'm sorry. So we but don't yeah. have ads or anything in our books. So we, you know, mm-hmm. we publish everything through Kickstarter. Uh, so it, essentially it's like, it comes out to like with shipping, it's probably $4, $5 per issue. Let's just say like, then, even with the, the sizable Kickstarter that we just did, it basically, it afforded us all of what we were able to do by yeah. for pr- producing the things that we promised and shipping them. Yeah. That's it. I mean, and that's- then, once we have the, you know, we, we can grow uh, our audience and get uh, profit through the initial print that we have afterward. But exactly. like, right we now, have extra copies from the Kickstarter. So the exactly. Kickstarter gave us stock basically yep. in our own book. Yes. So but I would say like if you had to hire an artist to draw you, if you're the writer and you don't have an artist and you need to hire an artist that gets really expensive really fast. I know yeah. like page rates can range from like 80 to 150 a page and yeah. your average issue is 22 to 24 pages. So, I mean, just an artist, that's, that's almost $3,000. So yeah, that's a lot of money. So I, it can be, it just depends on the situation for us. It just happens to be that Stephen and I are both willing to eat the cost of mm. production because we I mean, we, time. We, this mm. and we talk and that's also why it, takes us a year to make a book sometimes mm-hmm. you know because like we're eating the cost we're not like if if we had ten thousand dollars like here's steven here's ten thousand dollars just to draw the comic book and not you know we didn't have not to work a, a week you know a monday exactly. through friday job then monday through friday job is comic then we'd exactly. be able to produce them like once a month but yeah i'm, I'm really hoping we get closer and closer to that as we go I'm we hoping- need that if we're going to produce any of the longer series for sure because we can't like push out like an absentees or a scavengers without like that ability so yeah i yeah i i totally agree um all right so let's go daily downing um hi daily asks favorite dinosaur and why steven oof i used to love so many dinosaurs but i would say it's a tie between a triceratops and probably a basic bitch tyrannosaurus rex fair um, I'm going to say Reptar because I'm right. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, my favorite, what would, what would my favorite be? Um, I like, you know, you know, I like the Ankylosaurus. I like, I like a lot, a lot of weird dinosaurs. Like, there's a I, lot of cool ones. There's a lot of cool dinosaurs. I, I mean, I, I like the Stegosaurus is really cool looking, you know? I, I obviously, uh, you know, like the, the, Jurassic Park version of raptors are awesome. Yes. You know, like if they like you, know, you want to argue, of course, they were like little turkeys or whatever. Yeah, but- you, you don't want someone coming in here telling you the velociraptors are actually only three and a half feet tall and they were covered I, in feathers. Listen, I, my our favorite dinosaur is the Jurassic Park velociraptors. OK, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> and it's, it's accurate. The scientist, the great scientist and paleontologist uh steven spielberg as you're you know. telling me that one of the greatest movie makers of all time doesn't know what a raptor looks like and you do buddy yeah, paleontologist man, more like get out of my life ologist <laughs> so, <laughs> with your okay. feathered dinosaurs so <laughs> so that kid was right it really was a six foot turkey it was a six foot turkey he, he was right full the circle. worst the worst <laughs> character in the movie was the most accurate and i hate it i hate his guts um so who is it? The Krusty Boys? Uh, quite possibly the world's greatest podcast, I think it says. Um, if you had to eat your co-host to survive, would you? Also, hypothetically, where would you start? Like Kobayashi! Ah! Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, I think Stephen and I can both agree that if we had to eat anything to survive, we'd probably just chop off one of Stephen's legs, right? Yeah, because like, like, I mean, up. my leg is meaty and healthy and strong. Or like, yeah, like I, because like you can use your hands. If we chopped off that sweet calf, yeah, like why is it every time it's like, oh, we gotta wait for someone to die or kill someone and eat them? It's no like, way, dude. Bro, let's just start like, let's basically like 
sack of them each as we go until 100, we get hungry again. One hundred percent. You know the funniest thing about that is we take your leg and we'd be like, "Ooh, we're gonna eat for like a week with this baby," and then we chop mine off and be like, "We got like an afternoon snack." <laughs> and, so, and then, but you know what suck is like, what if mine was so delicious though? So, we're just like, we might have to double dip because like we got a double dip baby. Like we're going in. There's a whole, there's a trio of horror where, of The Simpsons where um, Homer eats himself and he starts realizing that he's delicious so he like oh. he just starts chopping off things and like like grilling it and like marge comes home and he has like nothing left it's so oh like he's um, just eating everything but i imagine that's what we'd be like i mean like how before i turn to cannibalism i'd have to know that i'd have to know the end game like if you told me someone's coming in a week or like two weeks to get you and they're definitely going to show up and i know that I might like we might turn to something like that. We'd be like, okay, we gotta figure this out. Cause I'm imagining this is in a hypothetical world which there's nothing else we could possibly eat, like even our shoes, right? Because why else would we turn to eating each other unless it's the only option? Like it has to be. Yeah. Okay, then again, then again, Steven, I did watch Man vs. Wild once, right? My God. So like I, I haven't seen a lot of this show, but hilariously, one of the only episodes that I've ever seen, he he's like, This is what you do if you get dropped into a desert. And he's like, you 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 take a shirt you take your shirt and you pee on it and you wrap it around your head i was like but what if there's someone right there like like <laughs> like the first thing you do is you you t- you, t- you survey you know your surroundings you look around you see if there's anyone there you see like like okay if i have to walk 100 yards i don't have to pee on my head like if there's someone there you have to pee on your face like don't you don't have to he's into that there's no chance he's not <laughs> This is crazy. Let me the moment I step into a desert. Fuck, 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 fuck. I got pissed on this. <laughs> got pissed on my head. Here we go. The moment then you just like, you like turn the corner and there's like a 7 like, Eleven. You're like, I just, oh, this, I, is this is awkward. This is awkward for all of us. Like, you turn, there's just someone there on like a camel. Like, you need a ride, bruh? Like, oh. He also has pee on his head, though, because it's a thing you do if you're in the desert. Why? They just call me by my name, like, for the rest of like that region's history is Yellow Towel. <laughs> it's like, just. <laughs> Um, all right, let me see. It's oh, dude, it's nine thirty-seven. Jeez. Uh, okay, Gwen, Gwen and Dad asks, um, if your sheets had to be made of deli meat, what deli meat would you choose? To- oh, um, Cap- Gabagool, Capicola. Nice. I love spicy ham. So that or prosciutto, 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 prosciutto. I don't know how to say it, but it's really good. What's I mean. What are you maybe a deli cheese, like maybe like a Ooh, interesting, interesting. I think it'd be too stiff though. I'd, I'd like, I'd even, I'd even, not, not if it's white American from Land of Lakes. Ooh, that's true. That'd, that's be, true. Nice, make that'd like be nice, that'd be nice and nice, soft. Nice, soft. Ooh, okay. But then, oh, if it gets hot, it melts over me. <laughs> just, <laughs> like, and it has the quickest melting point. It, does. it would, it would, you're, just me, you're immediately an omelet. Like, you're just. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna wrap myself in that cheese. I'm gonna be an omelet. Yes, please. We have questions from Paige. That's like, right. <laughs> I probably missed it, which she didn't. Paige, we we got uh, you got it in just in time. The last one it says she has three questions. One, would you rather write comics or make movies? Um, honestly, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna lie. Like, it, like I, if you told me uh, we can make comics for the rest of our lives and I don't have to go work at Michaels and Steven doesn't have to freaking lift heavy stuff in the sun anymore, I would write comics and never make a movie if that were the deal. Like, I don't freaking care. Like, I like telling stories. I don't really care about the medium. I'm not one of those. I'm like an actor who's like, I'm like I really want to make music now. It's always what I wanted. And I was acting was just to get there. Like, I love making comics with Steven. It just takes long because we have to we have day jobs and it's more frustrating. And um, what do you think, Steven? Would you rather make movies or comics? Honestly, whatever whatever way lets us express ourselves, I guess. I think I would probably feel not as involved if it was strictly movies, but I'm sure I'd find a way to become involved. Just yeah, that's I, something I, I don't know now. You know what I'm saying? Now, but, I, I feel like um, you know what I think we'd really shine is if you and I wrote like a sitcom together, like a series. Uh-huh. That's what I think it would be like, because I, th- I think like if we just got in a room together and just like wrote it together as like, you know, like if we wrote Roommate from Hell. And we were just like, hey, let's just do like four episodes of this thing, you know, like for fun. I think that would be and then it was just like the two of us 
in room spitballing back and forth back and forth i think that would be like the the most fun uh but as far as movies are harder with that because it's yeah you can write a movie with someone else like it happens like you know like um captain the woods zombie land writers who are they yeah zombie land and yeah like it happens but like it's 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 a harder dynamic because it's one solid story you know rather than like you know a, a serialized sort of thing um okay anyway number two what were you what will you do with your first big check after you get hired by Shutter and get famous? Stephen, what are we going to do once we get famous? Once we get like that uh, the check? first first, first like I'm, we're talking like it's a big check, right? This yeah, is the yeah. big check. This is the big check. I mean, we're breaking it's only for on two dollars, like... but it's like seven <laughs> feet. Long. I'm sorry, <laughs> Michael but... Scott. Yeah, the check costs more than what they had. But anyways, uh, I would say if if it was like a big check, like money like life-changing forever check then we're, we're we're breaking ground on the colony i mean that's like a legitimate thing like oh, we're yeah. the property is purchased and we're starting to build homes so we can just Dude, live by each oh, other it would be so nice it would be so nice you know how cool it would be oh, yeah that's the dream that's of course the dream you know like there's so many things i would like to do like if money weren't an option which by the way like i i imagine yeah even getting like a big check, you still have to be like, Oh, I hope there's a next one, you know, but it's like, mm. uh, but, it, but if, if we're like, if it's like a lotto money, like lotto situation where it's like, Oh, yeah, like, like nothing, you know, I, I would love to open something where I don't have like a, a little business where I don't have to worry about profits at all. And I can just make whatever the heck I want, you know, like something that's like comfortable to, to, you know, just like open up, like, like something like uh, where we could sell our friends books and comics and like all that stuff. We shouldn't. Well, yeah, it'd be cool to open open up like a coffee shop comic yes. book place, like, like a open coffee shop, like shop a beatniks, like just yeah, like a dude. exactly, low chill. like a little have like a little stage. Look. Yes, yeah, where we can, for, yes, we open can mics. Perform, open mics have friends, like people there. That would be that'd be cool. awesome, especially if you don't actually care about the profit. If it doesn't matter and you're not like stressing out about it, and you can just like eh, the rent's paid, everything. You know, we're just here to enjoy it and like give. You know, we're gonna give our friends some jobs. Whoever wants to work and. A freaking like comic book coffee shop and like you know like do this it'll be fun you know um i'd like to do something like that and that could be part of the colony you know but like I'd, i've always thought something like that would be cool if, if you know if you had the means the last question we have steven is you're forced to watch only one movie for the rest of your life which one are you choosing and why one last movie huh one final movie your whole life you get one movie and you can watch it as many times as you want but it's the only movie you're allowed to watch i'm gonna go Step Brothers. Dude, I was thinking the same exact thing. I was, this is what, I, this is what went in my mind. Okay. I went probably Step Brothers. That was my first thought. And then I went, yeah, but uh, I, I'm going to miss Lost Boys. I'm going to miss, you know, like there are movies I'm going to miss, you know? And I was like, yeah, but Step Brothers is one of those movies. <laughs> I can't even explain it, dude. Like it's so stupid. But no matter how many times I watch that movie, it, it gets, still gets you every gets you. single time and it's so stupid and it, every time no one can explain the chemistry of john c Riley and will ferrell but it yeah. is it is literal that movie, gold. you know what like the funniest thing uh, like a, a funny thing i should say about that movie is like it feels like a movie that's written for 13 year olds and it's performed by 40 year olds and it's perfect it's so mm. funny it's just, like it's so funny like that movie like it's i it could totally work if they were 15 and it works i mean you know it's just so funny to think about it because like their mentality is like they're so like youthful and ridiculous and immature and so you know but it's just perfect um but yeah i like that's a good one i was thinking like princess bride or like oh uh, princess bride be a good one these are all good ones but like those they have you know a little bit of everything but like Mm. (laughs) i'm gonna go with you too i think i think step brothers (laughs) is a smart choice it basically changes the way your your life rolls like you don't watch movies as often but then when you do you can like relax and laugh and be and separate and click off of something you know yeah i yeah i think that's that's probably where i'd go because like i mean otherwise i would get too analytical about it and i try to find something that kind of like covers the quadrants you know where it's like oh let me get something that's going to make me think but also make me like laugh and also make me sad and also like this like, this like, has also led me th- this conversation though has just like sparked my you know how every like so su- any any talented director has basically taken jabs at the whole superhero franchise and yeah. has said like how other movies should be getting more time and spotlight I don't think they've taken into consideration that like the world as a whole, at least the people that consume have been beaten down for so long that we don't have time to like invest our spirits into some other plight. Yeah. And we just want to see a hero win because we don't, yeah, we don't win enough in our own lives. And that's probably I, why superhero movies took off so much. I mean, you that's know what I'm superheroes uh, took off to begin be- with. 
That's why, I mean, like, you know, you, that's why Superman worked to begin with, you know, and it's, and I'm with you and like, and you know, yes, I, of course I was, you know, Mm -hmm. born of the nineties, you know, like I, of course I have that like uh, inclination toward like the anti-heroes and interesting, dark, gritty stories and more like, you know, like I love that stuff. However, I need an escape sometimes, you know, like I need to like, look, look elsewhere, you know, and like there could be fun. And that's why I like things like Madman, you know, cause like mm-hmm. it can be silly and sincere. It can be like this, like intro because like even like Step Brothers has a whole hero's journey of these characters become, you know, like finding a maturity and finding themselves and also finding confidence in themselves together. Um, and like, you know, doing something with their lives, you know, with, within the realm of their, you know, personal capabilities and like limitations and such. And like that, I like those things and it can exist in, you know, uh, some deep, you know, um, dramatic, you know, just story, like some 17 hour long Martin Scorsese movie, you know, or like a, a you know, a Jordorowsky movie or whatever, you know, like it, it can exist. You can have all sorts of like fun metaphors and like David Lynchian things. You can also have like fun subtext in you know in comedy movies. It happens, and you know it's it exists everywhere, and it's fun. And you don't. I just I need I need a break, Stephen. Life's been weird, you know. It's like it's it's been a weird it's been a weird life, and we're and we're trying our best out here. Uh, so yeah, Step Brothers is a great answer. Speaking of uh, our weird life, Stephen, what are you going to work on this week? What are you going to work on next? More pages, more pages. And I got some stuff to ship. So nice. Yeah, I dude, got we got some orders. Um, If you recently ordered something from us, uh, we we just recently got everything in. I sent everything to Steven. Uh, so we, we got everything's the, everything. Fowler, you too. Everybody's going to be taken care of in the in the next week. So, yes. so also, uh, I should say, so this week I'm going to try my best to get issue four completely written, at least draft one of issue four written. I'm also going to try to, uh, write, I'm going to try, cause I have like, I have a, I have a pretty solid week. So I'm going to try to finish issue four and I'm going to get back to writing the movie. Um, but in, in addition to that, I'm also going to put, uh, issue two of deathless on our website so people can buy the physical copies. Cause you know, it nice. hasn't been up, but, but now that everything's out to the Kickstarter people, you know, and everyone's yep. you know, gotten their books, we can, we can do this. So if you're looking to, to get our comics, if you don't know what the heck we're talking about, go to, we have issues podcast.com and you can find all of our stuff or our stickers and all that stuff. Uh, and it's, it's available and you can check it out. Otherwise, Steven, I love you. You're amazing. I love you too, bro. You're the best. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. If you're only listening to one of the various podcasting apps, thank you. Thank you for checking us out anywhere. But, but please go check out uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash we have issues podcast. It really does help us out. We're trying to just like grow our numbers there and eventually we'll monetize this thing and, you know, be able to build our colony and, you know, buy, buy, or start a coffee shop that you can come check out and, you know, listen to us play music and, you know, mm-hmm. do this in public. You know, wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't it be fun to do like just like every week we just go up on stage and record like a public version of this thing where we just like oh that'd be so awesome wouldn't that be cool and it's you know like if it's kind of like that's what harmontown was like where it's like you know you show up and you're just like we're just having a conversation anyway why do i have to sit down for three hours and edit every week you know it's just who cares let's just freaking do this like if you're if you're interested good if you if you made it this far you probably don't care how much i edit if you you haven't made it this far you don't know what i'm talking about right now because you don't hear me and you don't really exist kind of you know so so you don't matter you're not welcome in our colony yes you are everyone is i love (laughs) you everyone is everyone is we love you you everyone has a yeah you come don't don't bring weapons until we're ready to bring weapons you know what happens every single time in those colonies like that's that's what happens right we have to we have to put the battle up so (laughs) every time um but thank you thank you all for watching and listening we really do love you we appreciate you and we hope to see you next week see if you want to say anything to the people before we go i love you guys thank you for supporting us every week um we're gonna get issue three out anytime not anytime probably be later in the year but we got you uh we appreciate you tuning in and i hope you all have a wonderful new year awesome all right but thank you so much i'm anthony i'm stevie wildcard this has been we have issues see you next time boom the only new year's movie i can think of is when harry met sally are there other new year's movies like what um is nick and nora a new year's movie I don't think I've ever seen Nick and Nora's no? playlist. Yeah, it's a good movie. It was, I mean, it was cute. I, I, I've only seen it like once, but it was cute. Um, I did. It's just so funny. I was thinking about like different holidays and how like, you know, like, you know, the holidays go on, especially Christmas is the most popular, of course. And people are just like, oh, th- that's a Christmas movie because it takes place like around Christmas. Mm-hmm. I never hear anyone like claiming 
New Year's movie. Like, why aren't there more New Year's movies? You know, it's like, is it is because like as you get older, you just do nothing on New Year's? Like, Mm -hmm. did you do anything on New Year's? No. Well, we went to her Tina's grandparents, and then but we were in bed by like nine thirty. That's what I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask. Like, did you like? I I haven't watched the ball drop in literally like ten years. Like I didn't watch the ball. I've watched the ball drop since my balls dropped. Okay. I have no care or whatever for the Eastern Standard Time of it becoming twelve o'clock. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so interesting though, because I was like, I remember like when I was younger, I was like, all right, like let's let like ten, nine, eight. Why are we all counting? Let's do it, okay? And we're here, and it's kind of like anticlimactic. And then like now, I'm just like, I'm ready for bed. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I don't care. The next morning, I'll wake up and be like. 2024 here we go it's a different one time to write the date wrong a bunch of times for the first month or so we'll get it eventually or we won't and no one will care you know what i always like about that is that surprise like middle of the year you write 2023 by accident because it just turns out last july you wrote a lot of dates down for some reason so your brain still remembers july being 2023 that's fair yeah dude i (laughs) I, now that I think about it, I truly just don't write the date a lot anymore. Like in my adult life, I just do, like I almost never like I I don't I don't think it matters anymore. I don't care what year it is, except for the fact that like I have a son that, to kind of keep track of where I'm like, oh, how old is this kid now? Oh, my gosh, he's going to be nine. You know, um, I my birthday is in a couple weeks. I'm going to be 38. I am a I am officially in my late 30s almost 40 years old you know but like i don't i mean i, I don't really care about the date anymore steven i never write it i never <laughs> need it i don't know why we have new year's i feel like like new year's maybe it maybe i feel this way because there aren't enough movies making me feel like it's a special <laughs> time steven that's what i'm saying like we need more new year's movies i should write i'm gonna write someone a- needs to write it's the second most wonderful <laughs> time of the it's year gonna like, it's gonna be like um a countdown where someone said like someone gets a note and they're just like when the ball drops your heart stops happy new fears Ooh, that's like bitches get stitch you yeah, <laughs> it's that time when steven's by himself and he sings he can't show his man kid because it's crazy right now with all the boxes there's a whole ass brand new toilet in a box behind me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 